With the first generation Audi Q7, you can tow things, transport things, travel long distances comfortably, and even go to the forest for some uh, mushrooms, perhaps. Well, you can, since it has a very good standard four-wheel drive system, but it's definitely not a proper off-road car, obviously. It also shares the same but slightly modified platform with the first-generation Porsche Cayenne and VW Touareg. But this Q7 is bigger than these cars and it was also available as a seven-seater version. The interior with the standard equipment can look pretty bankrupt like this, with the horrible looking standard MMI screen or standard fabric seats. But most of these cars are reasonably well equipped like this, with navigation system, leather seats or blind spot monitoring system. And sometimes you can find also cars with wealthy looking full leather interior with the impressive 14-speaker Bang & Lufsen sound system with heated and ventilated front seats and with all those other fancy features. When it comes to build quality or materials quality, there are basically no big issues. All the plastic parts in the interior are fairly durable, so finding a car with worn plastic buttons is not that easy. But if you found one, then most probably the keyless start-stop buttons or the window switches will be worn out. Let's move on to the things which can fail more often. The first possible issue is related to the windscreen wipers. Interestingly, the passenger side wiper arm can break, which can be an unpleasant surprise during driving in the rain. Then it's good to check the keyless entry feature if the car is equipped with it, because the keyless sensors in the handles can fail. In this case you have to buy a new handle or you can try to find a used one. But remember that the faulty keyless entry handles can drain the battery as well. The next thing on the list is the blower motor. It can simply stop working. It's located behind the glow box and there are even videos how to replace it, so it's not a hard job. You should check the electronically operated tailgate as well. If it's not closing properly, then most probably the latch is faulty. And last but not least, there is the MMI multimedia system, which can stop working most of the time because of a failed amplifier, which fails because of a well-known water leak. So as in the other cars, the water will cause premature death of some of the electronic modules and I don't think you would like any of that. I am death. Death. We don't want any. There are basically three well-known sources of water leaks into the interior. Let's start with the easiest one, which is related to clogged AC evaporator drain hose located under the glove box. If it's clogged, the water will leak onto the passenger side carpet, but luckily it's not hard to clean this drain hose. Just remove the plastic cover under the glow box, slide off the rubber tube, clean it with compressed air or with some edge trimmer line, and that's it. The next possible source of water leak are the clogged drains under the windshield, causing, again, water in the front foot well. Basically, there is a rubber drain plug behind the front wheel well cover on both sides of the car. Dried out leaves and other junk can be trapped in these rubber inserts, causing the water to accumulate in the scuttle panel area, which will eventually leak into the interior. And lastly, the most expensive water leak is caused by the infamous sunroof drains. There are four drain tubes in each corner of the big three-part panoramic sunroof, and they can leak, either because the drain tubes are clogged, which is not a big surprise, but also because of the upper plastic endings of the drain tubes, which simply get a little loose over time, creating a gap around the connection, which allows the water to leak not just into, but also onto the drain hose. The front drain tubes allow the water to collect in the front footwell area and the rear drain tubes allow the water to drip in the spare tire area and most importantly, right onto the amplifier which is located on the right side of the trunk. The fail damp will cause issues with the MMI multimedia system like no sound, random rebooting, it can drain the battery or the whole system will not work at all. 
Keep in mind that all the MMI modules are connected with fiber optics, so if one module is completely faulty, then the whole system will not work at all. If you don't know which module is faulty, then you can purchase a fiber optic loop bypass connector, which will help you to find the faulty module. But let's go back to the loose drain connections and how to fix them. First, you have to access them by removing some of the parts of the headliner. Then you can fix the connections freestyle basically, so you can put some glue into the gaps, or cut off the faulty connection, heat up the drain tube and put the connection inside the drain tube. At the end, any fix is better than no fix. This Q7 was available with the standard or with the adaptive air suspension. The air suspension is fairly reliable. If something breaks on it, then it's usually just the air compressor or one of the height sensors. And by the way, it's good to check the height sensor link rods, because they can be sometimes seized up. On the other side, there are not many cases of leaking air struts yet, but they will obviously start to leak sooner or later, mainly because of the age, not because of high mileage. So on cars which are older than 10 years, I would be definitely prepared to replace them. Most of the suspension parts are durable, but coming to 200,000 km, some of them can be worn out. But things which will be definitely worn out much earlier are the tires and brakes. Besides the regular steel brakes, some of the versions were available with the carbon ceramic brakes too. They obviously last a lot longer than the regular steel brakes, but they are really, really expensive, so it's good to avoid these cars with these expensive brakes, mainly if they have more than 130,000 or 150,000 kilometers, unless you have the money to replace them or they were replaced recently. All the petrol engines are equipped with direct injection, so the well-known problems with carbon buildup or injectors can occur. Ignition coils can fail as well, but this is nothing new and you can obviously minimize the possibility of these issues. Then mainly the 3.6 liter and the 4.2 liter engines can have faulty camshaft adjustment solenoids. Usually they get stuck because of long oil change intervals. In this case you get fault codes for the camshaft position, misfires or fluctuating idle. The 6 cylinder engines have 2 of them and the V8 engines have 4 of these solenoids. Sometimes you can get slight oil leak from them as well, but in this case there is no need to replace them completely. You just need to change the small o-ring on them. The 3.6 liter 6 cylinder engine is not bad, but in cars made to 2007 it can have issues with the oil pump bolt. So basically the oil pump sprocket bolt can break or it just become loose over time, causing loose sprocket, loose timing chain and in the worst case a destroyed engine. This is not extremely common, but it can sometimes happen on low mileage as well as on the high mileage cars. Interestingly, cars made from 2008 do have updated stronger oil pump bolt, so they won't have this issue. Then there is the 4.2 liter V8, which can have some problems too. First of all, this engine has two high pressure fuel pumps. The good thing is that they are located on the top of the engine, so replacing them is pretty easy and they usually don't fail completely. However, the bad thing is that over time fuel can slowly leak right out of the solenoid valve of this fuel pump, which is definitely not good to say at least. You can't buy just the solenoid unit itself as a spare part, so you have to buy the complete pump. And if one of the pumps starts to leak, then don't worry, because the other will sooner or later leak as well. After 200,000 km you should be prepared to change the timing chain and the plastic guides, but I will come back to this topic a little later. The 3 liter TFSI supercharged engine doesn't have uh, many problems, just the usual stuff. The last thing is that you should check the coolant while the engine is still cold. It has to be clean, topped up and you shouldn't see any oil in it. If there is oil in the coolant, then just run away. <music> 
the diesel engines are fairly reliable. In other words, they don't have unexpected major issues. The 3 liter V6 is a very popular engine, but it has these intake manifold flaps, which can sometimes fail. In this case, you get only a check engine light, so the car will drive fine. The flaps can be stuck, loose, or the actuator motor can be faulty. Then there are cases of popped out fuel injectors because of the snapped bolt on the injector. Again, on the 3 liter engines. So it's good to occasionally check these bolts or preventively replace them if you want. When it comes to injectors, yes, they can be faulty on all of the diesel engines, but usually just after 200,000 kilometers. In this case, you can most of the time notice a couple of signs like the occasional light gray smoke from the exhaust while acceleration or at idle, and also a slightly bouncing idle. So if you see that the idle is bouncing like this, then most probably some of your injectors are faulty. The reliability of the 4.2 liter V8 is very good if it's maintained properly and used mainly on longer journeys, of course. And if you want something special, impressive and insane at the same time, then choose the 6 liter V12. The reliability of this V12 is basically the same as the reliability of the 4.2 liter V8. Just keep in mind that the V12 has 12 injectors, two high pressure fuel pumps, and there is a bigger chance that the previous owner abused it. That's all. All of these engines are equipped with timing chains. The tensioner and the plastic guides can be worn, plus the chain can be stretched, but again, usually just after 200,000 kilometers. In this case, you get the well-known short rattle at cold start. But the funny thing is that there aren't many catastrophic engine failures because of the timing chains. I am not saying that there aren't any at all, because they are, but they really are not that common. I mean, you can let the engine rattle its own path through life, because why not? You know, it can rattle a month, and then the chain can jump at it, or rarely you end up with a destroyed engine, but it can also rattle for a couple of years without other problems. At the end of the day, it's up to you, if you want to push your luck or not. The timing chains are located on the back side of the engine, so you have to remove the engine to change them. This Q7 can be equipped with the older 6-speed or the newer 8-speed automatic gearbox, and the 3.6 liter petrol engine was available with a 6-speed manual as well. And lastly, don't forget to check the car properly for little rust bubbles, mainly on the tailgate and around the door handles. I am not saying that this car is notorious for rust, because it's not, but still, it's better to check these areas more closely. To summarize things up, buy only a car with a proper maintenance history, find a good independent specialist, change all the fluids in time and keep at least 3000 euros for the possible repairs. And if you are buying a car with more than 200,000 kilometers, then you should keep twice as much money. And if you have personal experience with this car or more information about it, then you can write it into comments. Thanks for watching.